Uh, how we doing? Uh, my name is Gilbert Ross, and I am doing a presentation tonight on real estate notes. I'm going to go through uh, what a note is, what real estate note investing is, and talk about why uh, you want to uh, look at real estate notes right now as a real estate strategy. Um, you know, if you're somebody just getting into real estate, it's something that you can do. Um, if you've been in real estate for some time, uh, you may want to diversify and look at this opportunity that we have in the market. And then obviously, if you're, you know, really experienced, um, you know, it can give you a chance to possibly pivot and look at uh, another way to uh, invest in real estate, especially uh, when we have everything that's going on uh, in the current market. It's a really good time um, to use this as a strategy, um, you know, moving forward. So, with that being said, let me share my screen. So here we go. Um, you know, again, that's my contact information there on the screen, my email address, my telephone number. Um, if you want to reach out and talk, um, you know, after the presentation, please feel free to send me a text or give me a call. And uh, we can answer any questions that you might have. So a little bit about me. I've been in uh, real estate in one form or fashion, either as a realtor, uh, investor for over uh, 20 years. Um, most of that as a real estate agent, uh, bounced around with a few different agencies and, um, you know, kind of went full time, part time over the years. So you know, just been in, you know, in and around real estate for a really long time. So I've seen the last time that the market crashed. And that's really one of the biggest reasons why I am trying to push real estate notes now because of what I saw back in 2008, 2009, and up until now. Had I, you know, gone, had I stayed with this at that, at that particular time, things would be a lot different, different for me right now. Uh, because of the opportunity that have been during the great financial crisis. And we'll get into some of the reasons why we think note investing right now is a way to go. Um, so, you know, done short sales, REOs, listed homes, dealt with uh, renters, buyers, and things of that nature in a 20 year uh, real estate, you know, career, you kind of do it, you know, you've done pretty much everything. Um, also have uh, experience in real estate development, worked as a uh, supervisor on a development project down in Newark uh, years ago. Um, so this is just, again, just part of my background, you know, been in real estate for a long time and seen a lot of things. Also was in property uh, insurance, worked for State Farm for a few years. So I know that side of, of this uh, industry as well, the insurance side of it. And right now, just trying to help uh, self-employed and professional and individuals with retirement capital. Uh, to obtain higher rates uh, more safely and secure securely with that with those funds. So that's what I'm doing currently. And so this is uh, again a real estate strategy to protect and grow your wealth. Uh, that's what you know real estates can do for you. Uh, they can um, they can provide passive income for you as well as building wealth and legacy. And we'll talk about that as we go along as well. So we're going to talk about what is a real estate note and seller financing. They kind of, you know, go hand in hand. Um, a real estate note is is one that's been created and seller financing uh, a lot of times is you create the note on a particular property. Um, why invest in notes and create seller financing now? We're going to talk about that. How your investment is secured. Obviously, you know, if you are going to invest in real estate, you want to make sure that, um, you know, how am I going to get paid back? How is my investment secure? And although, you know, any type of investing is a risk, you know, you are taking some form of risk. Uh, what we try to do is minimize uh, that risk. And because your investment is secured, it does that. Uh, we're going to talk about the types of real estate notes, where the inventory sources are for notes, and structuring uh, real estate notes. Just going to give, you know, a couple exa of examples of how we structure uh, notes. So what is a note? A note is a promissory uh, note provides the financial details of the loan's repayment, such as interest rate, method of payment, and how long 
uh, you're going to make those payments. So those are the, the, the things that go into creating a note. Um, you want to know how much you have to pay in total, how much you're going to pay per month, what the interest rate is on that, and for how many months do you have until uh, the time frame that you need to pay that off. So that's what a note is. A note is basically an IOU. Uh, if you are watching this and you know you are a homeowner, uh, you 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 should be familiar on what a note is. They they tell you you know you need to make the payment by the first of the month and this amount of money and this is what the interest on it is and this is there'll be a date when that matures. So that is what a note is. Uh, the types of notes um, you have you they really come in two two groups and then there's kind of like subgroups. You have performing and then non-performing. Um, non-performing is when someone is at least 90 days behind in paying uh, the mortgage. It falls into a non-performing status. A person can, you know, potentially make up that that money or those missed payments that they have um, or not. So it's at least 90 days of missed payments. And something that falls under non-performing is a sub-performing, meaning that they may pay good for six, seven, eight months in a row. Then they may miss a month. Then they may uh, make up with a double payment the following month, you know, continue to pay maybe for the next six, seven months again, and then maybe miss one or two payments and then make them up. So that's kind of like sub-performing. And we put that in the subcategory of non-performing because we feel that at any particular time, um, a sub-performing note can go non-performing. Obviously, something is going on there, uh, just depending on what the situation is on why, um, they're not paying consistently, you know, every month. And so at any particular time that could go into a non-performing status, but we do call it sub-performing when they have somewhat of a spotty pay history, we'll say. And then the performing notes, um, that's when someone makes their payment on the 1st or the 15th or whenever it's due, like clockwork. They're just making the payment and everything is going smooth and you're just sitting back and collecting those payments. And then you have what's called re-performing that kind of falls under the uh, performing, meaning that um, at one particular time, it was non-performing. Someone was having difficulty uh, making payments, missed some payments or whatever the case may be. But now maybe the loan got restructured. Um, you know, they've gotten back on track financially, whatever the case may be. Maybe they've come into some money. Uh, it could be a number of different reasons. And now they are consistently paying and have been for a certain amount of time. Now, somebody may call a reperforming note when someone has made uh, two consecutive payments. Uh, a bank may say that's reperforming. Um, somebody else may say that, or may want to see that somebody has making been making this payment for at least twelve months or twenty four months, depending on you know how far they got behind or what the situation you know was with the um, with the borrower. But that falls into a you know, once they get back on track and start making those payments, that now becomes a re-performing note. And you'll say, okay, so it looks like they had some trouble at one time, but for the last, you know, eight months, nine months, 12 months, they've been paying consistently. So it looks like they're back on track. So those are the categories that they fall into. And so what is seller financing? It's when a seller or owner of a property becomes the lender on the property they are selling. So um, you know, if you own a property, the property that you live in, you could actually turn into the bank on that particular property. Um, you can create seller financing, um, whether the house is paid off or if it has a mortgage on it. Um, you can still uh, do seller financing when you're trying to sell that property. And it could be, a, you know, a bunch of different reasons why you do that. Um, why you need to do that. And we'll kind of, you know, maybe touch on that a little bit later, but um, you have the ability to, to become the bank on that particular property. And especially this is done when you own a property uh, free and clear, uh, meaning that there is no mortgage on it. You know, maybe you don't need all of the money from the sale of the property at the time. And you can use this as a way to supplement your monthly income. You have this, this asset that you know, that you don't have to make a monthly payment on, and then you can structure it where now you can receive monthly payments on this particular property. So that's what seller financing is. So why invest in real estate notes? Um, you have low risk with a high yield. 
what we do with notes, um, because they are, because the way that we buy them, um, we can reduce our risk level when it comes to notes. We can protect ourselves when we purchase it in case, you know, something does happen. The person stops paying, like we talked about before, um, the shift in the market. Uh, maybe there's a downturn in the market and now the property isn't worth what it once was. We are protected against those things because of uh, how we purchase these. And you'll see that is one of the reasons here is always purchased at a discount. You know, how steep of a discount just depends on the situation. But a lot of times we try to, you know, get a note, um, your investment to the value of the property at about 70 cents on a dollar. Maybe a little bit more, uh, depending on the situation. Again, a lot of different factors. Um, but a lot of times you can get it less than that. You know, you can get it at 65 cents on a dollar, 60 cents on a dollar. And depending on the type of note that you buy, possibly if you buy a non-performing note, uh, you can get those at 25 cents, 30 cents on a dollar, 40 cents on a dollar, possibly 50 cents on a dollar. So you get significant discounts depending on the situation uh, with the note. So you can navigate and make sure that you're able to get a solid return on this investment. Um, now, why else do we like it? It's secured by the real estate. Um, if anything happens, uh, you can always get the property back. You always have the right to get the property back. And so when you have a note, uh, it goes along with the security agreement. Um, this, the security agreement in, in the form of an example is a mortgage. The seller of the home pledges a mortgage to the bank in case they don't follow through on their IOU or their note. There's some type of security agreement. In a lot of states, they call it mortgages. Other states, they have different names for it. Contract for deed. Uh, they have a trust. Um, I'm sorry, not contract for deed, but a land contract. And, um, you know, they have different names of names for these security agreements, just depending on part of the country you live in and what's common for that area. But essentially, most people are familiar with the mortgage. And that's what the mortgage is. It says that, you know, if I don't do what I'm supposed to do as the borrower, or a person living in the property, this is the bank's recourse against me. They can get the property back. You have multiple exit strategies. Um, you know, when you do, if and when you do take a property back, there's a number of different things that you can do with it. You can create a new note on it. Uh, you can uh, possibly sell the property, just depending on, you know, what the market is like at that particular time. Uh, you could turn it into a rental at that particular time if, you felt better doing it as a rental at that particular time. But there are tons uh, of different exit strategies that you can do. Again, this protects your investment. So, you know, going into a note, I have about three or four different exit strategies on every note that I look at and purchase that if something happens, if this happens, I can do this. If this other thing happens, I can do this, you know, and you kind of secure yourself knowing that when something does happen, I have a plan for it in the beginning. Um, passive income with no landlord responsibilities. When you are the bank, you're not uh, responsible for tenants, toilets, repairs, maintenance, roof, you know, cracking the floor, cracking a window, re replacing appliances. You don't have to do any of that stuff and you still get cash flow. And a lot of times because of those expenses, whether it be maintenance and other expenses, you know, the water, if you're paying um, utilities at the property, um, you don't have that anymore. You take, you look at yourself, if you're a homeowner or have been a homeowner or know somebody that is a homeowner, if something happens on a property, they don't call Wells Fargo. They don't call Bank of America or Chase. They have to deal with what's going on in the property, but they still have to make that payment on the 1st to 15th of the month each and every month. So you don't have those responsibilities like you do as a landlord. So a lot of times you can increase uh, your cash flow on a property when you structure it, you know, when you structure a note and you sell, you sell it with seller financing. Um, you, these can be purchased in all states. When you're the bank, you don't have to have the property down the street from you or 10, 15, 20 minutes from you. Um, you're the bank. You're just collecting the payment. So you can do this anywhere. You can be in one state and invest in another state. A lot of times you see people out in California that are investing in Alabama, Ohio, Michigan, some of the Midwestern and Southeast, Southeast states because 
for their money goes a lot further in those areas because of the real estate prices in the area. And you don't have to be there. You know, you don't have to, you know, if something goes wrong with the property, you don't have to get in your car and drive to the property and deal with it. You can deal with it from afar, so to speak. So um, that's a great thing as well. It can be purchased in all uh, states. Uh, you can, um, the um, this investment uh, can be purchased in a 401k, some type of a health savings account, savings IRA, a savings account with uh, with savings, excuse me, or IRA or some type of Coverdell account. So there are a number of accounts, uh, depending on where your money is. If it's in one account, you can get it moved over into an account where it can allow you to use this money to get a higher rate of return. Uh, maybe you have money in a CD. Maybe you have money in a money market account. Uh, maybe you just have some savings. Uh, Maybe you have a 401k at your job. You've been there five, six, seven, 10 years and built up, you know, a nice little nest egg. There's a way that you can move that money into an account where you have more control and be able to take advantage of these opportunities. And we can show you that too. If 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 you're interested, we can show you, you know, and get you to the right people to talk to about where this money can be moved to, the tax shelters and things like that, where you can use it uh, to invest in notes. Now, the current... Real estate market. What about this market makes notes an attractive investment? Well, you have the contracting of bank credit. Um, because of a lot of things that's going on in the commercial side of real estate and a lot of the losses and the problems on that side of it, a lot of banks, especially regional and local banks, community banks, are pulling back on credit. Even some of the big banks are as well. Um because of the you know amount of pressure that's going on in the commercial sector and just with the economy right now there's you know possibly a recession coming a lot of people you know are talking about that uh, some people believe we're already in a recession so uh, in times like that where banks have to they have to be really careful about who they're lending to and do they have the money to lend um, to more people right now they don't uh, credit, uh, the credit affordability index right now, if you look that up or Google that, you'll see a significant drop since the pre-pandemic days. It's about a 50% drop on what's available out there for credit. So this is where seller financing and notes come into to play in this because you you can create these and uh, offer home ownership that somebody can't go down to a bank and get the loan and, and do it that way. You can structure this for them and create homeowners. Uh, the inflation right now, uh, inflation is going to cause people to, you know, unfortunately get into some some uh, situations with their properties where they can't afford them. Um, you know, cost of you know living and gas and electricity and food and stuff like that has been going up, and it's going to cause people to fall into that non-performing. Uh, status. There's a bunch of that going on right now. Uh, there's about just under 2 million homes that are in some form of foreclosure. Uh, if you if you go to, um, I think it's called ICE, um, there used to be uh, Black Knight. You'll see their monthly uh, mortgage uh, report, and it shows that just under 2 million homes are in some form of foreclosure. And then inflation has something to do with that. Uh, a lot of times, if you look at the average times that someone has been in foreclosure for, the average is about a thousand days. So if it's a thousand days, which is, you know, basically three years, um, you know, you have people that have been in foreclosure for, you know, maybe four or five years, and then you have other people that are just coming into it, you know, at 90 days, but the average is a thousand. So there's a lot of pent up, um, a real estate that that's distressed um, that ha that is going to be coming our way, you know, as note investors and people who want to invest in notes, uh, and we'll show you where that inventory comes from. Um, lack of new construction in single family and multifamily. A lot of the multifamily homes are coming to market now between 2024 and 2025. A lot of that stuff was being built, you know, prior to the pandemic, and then you had the pandemic, so a lot of that stuff is coming out now. And they're not going to be building anymore because of the interest rate environment that we're that we're in. 
it doesn't make sense. Those deals don't pencil um, because of the rising interest rate. So there's going to be a lack of multifamily and apartment buildings being built after uh, 2025. So, you know, that stuff is coming on the market now. And then prior to the um, around 2005 to about 2009, there was a significant amount of homes built uh, at that time. Then you had the great financial crisis. And, but since about 2009, there hasn't been the same amount of single family homes uh, being built. So there's going to be uh, more demand for homes than what is available to people. So if you're a note investor, and like I said, if you happen to get that property back for whatever reason, you're most likely going to have people that will, that, you know, want to, to either, uh, you know, own that home or live in that home. You're going to have that for the next uh, few years for the near future. So that's another reason why you want to, to, to get involved in real estate notes. Uh, the current condition of the regional and large banks, as I mentioned, um, you know, a lot of them are distressed. There's about 4,600 banks in the country. Um, a lot of those are going to be purchased by bigger banks. Uh, you're going to see a contraction. I would say within the next two years, you're not going to have 4,600 banks. Uh, you may have a third of that. Uh, so uh, just a lot of a lot of stress is going on in the banking system right now. And when that happens, you know, there's not as many uh, loans that are being made. And this is where we can come in and create loans and create uh, situations for, for homeowners. Um, banks are liquidating assets. They have to show up their balance sheets right now uh, because of, uh, you know, what's going on. And like I said, on the commercial side and the requirements that they're, uh, they're making banks hold in terms of reserves, um, they are going to, they're getting rid of some of this bad um, paper uh, that we talked about, the 1.9 million homes that are in some form of distress. They are bundling those up and then they're selling them off. I think the last sale was right at the end of uh, 2023. I think in November, there was a non-performing uh, note sale. And we'll talk about that when we get to the inventory. Uh, rental growth has stalled. Um, you know, a lot of... Through the pandemic, everything was shooting up, you know, on a nice upward trajectory. Well, that's kind of tapered off right now. Um, again, because of the economy and where we're at right now, um, that's that's being pulled back on in terms of the rental growth. Uh, so that's another reason that contributes to people, you know, possibly coming over and, and we can make them homeowners as opposed to them paying these exorbitant amounts for rent. A lot of times you can get them into a property for what they're paying in rent especially in the affordable markets. Um, and I mentioned the um, the foreclosure. So why sell a property with seller financing? So you want to sell a property with seller financing because you can maximize the amount of money you can get for the property. Um, you know, if you're somebody that, you know, maybe hasn't lived in a property for a long, you know, 10, 15, uh, 20 years and built up a lot of equity, but your life has changed. You have to move a job. You know, a situation has occurred where you need to make, you know, a move and you can't stay in this particular property and you don't have a lot of equity. Well, you can do, you can use seller financing to help you get a maximum amount for the property by creating a loan and becoming the bank on the property. So you have something in place already. And then what you're going to do is create another loan um, for somebody else. And then while yours is continue to pay down, they're paying you. And there'll be a spread there at some particular point when the property sells. Um, you can close in a little as seven to 10 days. Um, you know, we can do things a lot faster. We don't have to go through all of these inspections and have somebody tell you everything that's wrong with your house. You know, we don't have the realtors involved um, and things of that nature. You know, we can deal more directly with each other and get things closed in a faster uh, time frame. If you choose, if not, you can also structure it where, you know, I may need two months, you know, to get myself together for my next move. We can be very flexible uh, when you are uh, creating seller financing or terms for us to buy the property. Again, no inspections. Uh, you don't have any liability once you um, seller finance this home. You're passing that on to the person that's the new buyer. They're going to be responsible for everything. As we talked about, you know, a little bit earlier, you know, something happens in the home, you don't have to, to fix it. They're going to be responsible uh, for fixing it. Um, 
no maintenance responsibilities. Uh, again, we talk about increasing cash flow. Um, and when you have a when you create these uh, seller financing or these notes, uh, you can liquidate your note. Your note is worth something. And we'll show that an example. But let's just say at a certain time, um, two years down the road after you sell or finance this and created a note on it that you need to free up, you know, maybe twenty five, thirty, forty thousand dollars. You can take your note and pledge that and get a loan or or something or, or you can get money for it. You can sell your note. You can sell partial of your note and we'll, you know, kind of go through that. But um, you have the ability to do that if you need to liquidate. Um, and that, and also what we're doing is that we're creating homeowners, you know, they're, I don't know if people have heard, you probably have heard they're trying to create a nation of renters and we really don't want that. We want to encourage people to be homeowners so they can build equity uh, for their families, for their legacy, for the future, for, you know, for, for the future, uh, for people uh, down the line that could take advantage of that equity later on in life. And we want to create homeowners as opposed uh, to renters. And it's harder for the seller to walk away uh, when you, uh, I should I should have buyer there, actually the buyer. Um, it's harder for the buyer to walk away from the property when they have something invested in the property. A lot of times when we create notes, we take a significant down payment. You know, we're not like FHA and some of these two and 3% down payments that people take, we don't do that. We make sure that we get a quality person that's going to buy this home that is invested in this home that has put, you know, what they call skin in the game. Um, and it's hard for them. You know, what is it harder to walk away from a $2,500 deposit or a $20,000 down payment? Because now you put that $20,000 into the property, you most likely built in some equity and you want to get that back. So, if and when something does happen, a person, a lot of times when they are an owner, you know, won't just walk away from the property. They'll at least try to work with you as the bank to maybe figure some things out. And, you know, maybe we can modify this loan or whatever the case may be. But um, you have a better chance of, of the person working something out with you as opposed to a renter. And so so how we talked about a little, we mentioned it before, is how are you how are you secured it's, it's because of that security agreement. Um, so, you, you know, if you have a stock or or something similar to that, you don't have a tangible asset that you can uh, go and get back if something happens with your investment. With notes and seller financing, the property, you can always get that property back. And then also a confession of judgment. You can do some type of paperwork, just depending on where it is. We have to speak to an attorney and everything like that. But what we do a lot of times is have somebody, you know, pre-sign a deed and say, this is part of this agreement that if you don't pay, you know, after 90 days, you know, I can then go file this and get this property back and not have to go through these lengthy foreclosures. So I know different states have different laws, but, um, you know, we we look to, to get this as a part of the agreement to protect ourselves. So somebody's not you know, doing the whole bankruptcy thing and stretching this out for years at a time, uh, they understand that if you don't make this payment, I have the right to go down, you know, and file it and take the property back. This too will give them more of an incentive to maybe reach out to you, to talk to you, to say, okay, I've gotten into some trouble, but this is what I'm doing. You know, can you work with me? And then we can kind of, you know, work with these people to make sure that we can keep them in the, in the property. So that, that gives you that uh, layer of security uh, when you are creating seller financing or in, or buying notes. Um, this right here is just a security agreement. It's the mortgage is what it looks like um, and how it breaks down. You know, on a typical deal, you'll see this in the file. Um, and this here is an example of a property um, from a deal that's in Ohio that, you know, happened uh, years ago, but we wanted to use it as an example to show. Um, this one is a non-performing note property value on this one is 80,000 and we're able to buy this for about 28,000. So would you not buy something worth $80,000 for 28,000? Now again, we don't know what the inside looks like. Uh, you know, it could need some repairs, it could, you know, uh, 
need some painting, you know, replace this, replace that, whatever the case may be. But even if we did that and had to put in another $10,000, so now we're in it for $38,000, don't you feel comfortable? Don't you feel secure knowing that this asset is still worth $80,000? And what if you didn't want to put that money into it? Maybe you didn't you didn't want to put that money into it. Could you not sell this for thirty eight thousand and make ten thousand dollars off of your initial investment? And when you do that, uh, that's a really good return, and you didn't have to do anything. Um, so this is kind of where you can pick up things in these different price ranges, you know, fifty percent or below. A lot of times on these non performing uh, notes, and then be able to you know, think about the different exit strategies that you want to do. So again, you know, you invested uh, 28,000, uh, you're taking over, there, there's a, there, and there is a certain amount of unpaid balance that's still owed to you. Um, so if this person, you know, wanted to, you know, try to redeem this and come back later on, you know, there's a certain amount of time that they can redeem these, they have to be able to uh, pay off what is owed to you. You know, so, um, you know, and the unpaid balance all, all the time is is more than than what you put into the property. So if you do get that amount again, you're safe. And this is why, you know, we really want to stress the safety aspect of it and, and, and why you're safe is because of where you're buying at with these discounts. And in this instance, this one sold for 50,000, somebody, you know, because of the way that the property was. It didn't have a significant amount of damage. Uh, the way that it looked, um, someone picked this up for about 50,000, which is still good for them because they even, they still have $30,000 worth of equity in this property. So it worked out for everybody. You know, you got your 28,000 plus another 22,000. The person got the property for less than what the value of the property is. They're happy, you know, so... They could live there and then in a few years sell it and they'll make themselves maybe thirty, forty thousand dollars, uh, just depending on what goes on in the market at that time. But everybody, you know, worked out well for everybody in this instance. We took the same property and we're showing you a performing note. Now, on a performing note, you're not going to get as big as a discount as you did on a non-performing note because this person is making the payment. So if they're making the payment, then great. Um, you can purchase this one. Um, for forty two thousand seven hundred sixty six, and it's still worth eighty thousand dollars. And your payment, your monthly payment, is four hundred thirty three dollars and thirty two cents, and you have eighteen years remaining on it. So this is a ten point six annualized return that you can get for the next eighteen years. I mean, everybody right now wants to try and get into some type of investment that is beating inflation. Um, even some of the high numbers on inflation, uh, you would still be at or beating inflation at a 10.6 uh, return. Uh, and so if you took that $433 and you times it by 12, and then you divided it by the 42, 7, 7, uh, 66, you would see that your return is, you know, just over 10 and a half percent, which is a very solid return. And you're just collecting payments because in this one, this person is just paying. You know, there's no, there's no issues, no problems. And even if it were, you know, let's say two, three years down the line, there becomes an issue. You're only in the property for 42 and actually less than that because you've collected payments for two, three, four years. And then now there's an issue. And most likely it's not worth 80,000 anymore in three years. Maybe it's worth 90. And let's just say the market did take a downturn and it went down to 60 you know, you're still protected. You're still protected in an instance. You've, you've, you've collected payments for three or four years. And, you know, so you've gotten some of the money that you put into it and the property is still worth over and above uh, what you paid for it. So you're still in good position, even if the market goes down. And obviously if it goes up, you're in even better position. So, you know, just to finish up kind of here, we're going to talk about the inventory and where it comes from. So what happens is, um, banks originate these loans and then they sell them um, to a lot of times the uh, GSEs, the uh, government sponsored entities, and they have them and they purchase them, you know, once they're originated, they purchase them from them, they have them. And then, you know, if things go wrong with them, these government uh, agencies then pull up these loans 
And what they do is then they sell them into the secondary market. So it goes from bank origination, gets sold all the way, you know, to the big um, government sponsored entities. They hold them. If and when there is an issue, they start to sell them into investment companies, hedge funds, private equity companies. Just like I mentioned before, there was a non-performing note sale in November. I think October of November, 2023, there was like a hedge fund or a private equity firm that bought that because they have that type of money to that, you know, these are high, you know, very expensive transactions. They could be, you know, 30, 40, 50 million dollars to buy, you know, three thousand, five thousand dollars worth of loans because the outstanding balance on those loans are in the hundreds of millions of dollars. So even though if you're spending 20, 30 million dollars, you're paying about 10, 15 cents on the dollar for all of those loans. So, um, you know, these larger companies can play in that space and buy them directly from the government sponsored entities. And so, um, you know, that's where the inventory comes from. And also it comes from um, what they call a mom and pop person who creates it. Somebody like we talked about earlier, they have a house, they created a note on it, or they have a house that's paid off and then they wanted to do seller financing and they have the note. So that's kind of how, you know, where we get the inventory. Either we reach out to individuals and see if they want to sell their notes or, after these government sponsored agencies sell notes into the secondary market to the hedge funds, private equity companies, those companies then go through um, that inventory and there's a certain amount that they don't want. You know, they're dealing, you know, obviously these are big companies, you know, have a lot of money. They're not interested a lot of times in some of the smaller notes that we just did an example on, something less than 100,000, less than 125,000, less than 150,000. They don't really want to deal with that stuff because they want to deal with the four or five, six hundred million dollar homes and they want to focus there. So what they do is that they carve out a lot of times there may be 200, 300 of the loans that fall into this lower price category that say they they say, hey, you know, we only paid about 15 cents on a dollar, 20 cents on a dollar for this. If we could sell it for 20, you know, maybe for 30, 35, 40 cents on a dollar, you know, we'll do that all day because we just don't want to deal with it. So these these you know these investment companies and uh, other uh, investors have a chance to buy those from those companies. Whether you buy them in smaller pools, maybe you buy three to five, or you can buy them individually from these companies uh, once they get them because they bought them at let's say forty cents on a dollar, and they may sell them to you for fifty, sixty cents on a dollar. Everybody's happy. You, you're happy because you bought it at a good discount. They're happy because uh, of what they, they paid for it and they was able to get rid of it. So, you know, they can go and do this again. Everybody is happy in that scenario. So um, that's where the inventory comes. That's how it flows down and kind of gets to where we are. And then you have, again, reaching out to individuals. You can get a list, um, you know, reach out to these people, either phone or by direct mail. And a lot of times because of what's going on again, in this time, sometimes people need the cash and they're willing to sell their note and they're willing to do it at a certain discount because they need the money now and not wait each and every month for that monthly payment. They need a, um, they need to liquidate and, and, and get some money for whatever reason. Um, and so that's where another, you know, the other, the other source of where these notes come from. And so creating um, creating seller finance notes, like I said, we have a free and clear property, properties that have a mortgage, or we can do a hybrid model. So I'm just going to give a couple examples here um, just to finish up. So if you have a free and clear property, maybe, you know, I'm just using round numbers uh, for uh, this, this uh, presentation. You know, we want to sell this property at $100,000. You know, we have this property. Somebody, you know, mom and pop has this property and... You know, it was passed down to them or they lived in it all their lives. They paid off the mortgage. Now it's free and clear and they want to sell it for a hundred thousand dollars. But, you know, they don't want to necessarily take all a hundred thousand dollars too because of, you know, capital gains. They're going to get taxed possibly, you know, just depending on where they're at in their life and everything like that. There may be a tax uh, consequence by taking in all a hundred thousand dollars. So what they can do with this as well is sell it with seller financing. They can take ten thousand dollars down, create the note. And ninety thousand dollars—that's the hundred thousand minus the ten thousand dollars payment down payment that you got. 
And that's their money right then and there. They only pay taxes on that amount of money as the gain right now. And um, they can write the note at $90,000, 10% for 360 months. And now they've created $789.81 of monthly cash flow. You know, that's a nice little number, especially, you know, if you're an older person or even if you're a younger person, an extra $700 coming in uh, each and every month, you know, works for you where you're at in your life. So this is how we can structure this on a free and clear property. Now, this next example is that if there's already a um, a loan on the property. So what we're going to do essentially is create a wrap uh, note. That means it's going to wrap around the existing financing that's on the property. Again, we're going to sell it at $100,000. Um, the underlying loan that, that you have um, before you sold it is still at $75,000. So you're going to then you know, still take $10,000, that's your money, create a note at $90,000 that's going to wrap around that $75,000 of unpaid principal that you have. So every time somebody makes you a payment, some of that payment is going to cover this underlying mortgage. Now you don't have that responsibility anymore because that person is now paying you. And then whatever the difference is from this $90,000 note that you created at 10%, and what you have to pay the bank becomes your the money that you can keep. So somebody else is basically paying off your mortgage because you've created a mortgage for them. And then lastly, it's like a hybrid model where you can sell a property using both um, seller financing and um, and you could you know take you, you can create a note for your equity. Um, so on this, again, you have a $100,000 purchase price. There's the first lien on the property is at $50,000 that this is what the seller had in place already. Um, they had, you know, they had a, a, a lien when they first bought the house, they paid it down to $50,000 now, and it was, it's 4% and it had originally 360 months. So it got paid down over time. So, you know, it could be, you know, 200 months left on it, 180 months, whatever the case may be. And then their payment on that was $238.71. So, um, <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. No, their remaining balance was only $35,000 um, on this. Um, and it's for, it has 85 months remaining. And so what you can do is say, okay, you're going to, I'm going to, we're going to wrap this note around this first one. So you'll pay off this $35,000. And then once that gets paid off, once the $35,000 gets paid off, I'm going to, you know, this other note that we have for my equity is also there as well, because now I want to keep my equity. I have $50,000 worth of equity. Property is worth a hundred. And, um, you know, I have about a $50,000 uh, worth of equity there. So I can create another note to say, okay, now for this $50,000, you're going to pay me 10% um, interest uh, for 360 months. And what that payment is, and then the difference between those two you know, obviously is yours. Uh, so once that 35,000 gets paid off completely, that's over, that's done. Now you still have somebody paying you for the equity of the property and they're just continuing to pay that over time. So you're making cash flow between what is going out on the remaining balance and another payment on what you structured for your equity. And so you'll just continue to, to to uh, collect that over time because for whatever reason you weren't able to sell it at the price that you had you know wanted to get for it so you could collect your whole fifty thousand dollars worth of um worth of equity so you structure it where you can get it month by month you took a down payment still so you put some money in your pocket and now you're creating monthly cash flow you know with these with the difference um on the two notes that you created so um you know the person is going to cover your 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 unpaid balance that's there so that you know you don't have to pay that anymore and then they're still going to pay you for your equity over time and then again you can always take that $50,000 worth of equity note that you created and you can go and sell that at any particular time you can go and sell that um it's it you know if you need to liquidate at another time, you don't want to continue to wait for those monthly payments. Something else came up in the meantime. You can always go sell that and, 
you know, recoup that money at that particular time. So, you know, this is, um, you know, that's the presentation that I have on it. Hopefully it all made sense. Uh, like I said, I just wanted people to understand the opportunity that's out there right now uh, in this current market and then how we can structure these things and where this inventory is. And it's going to be here for some time. It's here now and more is on the way with, you know, all the homes that are in some form of foreclosure and um, just everything that's going on in this economy. So if you want to reach out, you know, please do. My telephone number is 973-475-8488. Um, or you can send me an email at investorgmr at yahoo.com. If you want to have a conversation, you know, talk about something, maybe get some clarity on this, uh, please reach out. Uh, we're here Tuesdays and Thursdays at this time, 8.15 p.m. So we'll be back on Thursday um, going over actual deals that are out there right now and show you, you know, things that are really out there. So hopefully you'll want to join us for that and we'll show you, um, you know, deals that that can be done right now. All right, everyone. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. And you enjoy the rest of your night.